Thank you for the introduction, and especially for stealing my joke. It's my pleasure to present AutoMine, a graph mining system supporting both high generality and performance. My advisor and I come from Colorado School of Mines, and this, since this work diverges a bit from the original meaning of mining that the school is named for, switch out a mine cart for a graph here. In order to mine in graphs, we first consider graphs themselves. The simple web graph starts from the SOSP conference website and has links to the SIGDOPS and USENIX sites, so you can check out what those organizations do. There's also a link in the top left that refers back to the site itself. So we have this nice little graph with four vertices and four edges. As it turns out though, the internet is a little bigger than that these days, and so are many of the other data sets that we work with. The Facebook graph, for instance, has over two billion users, and the human genome over three billion base pairs. With the internet at at least 20 billion connected devices, and two of these data sets continuing to grow, while well, we're leaving the human genome behind a bit, the trillions of connections between them make such data sets challenging to even store, let alone perform computations on. But that's not stopping anyone. And many systems have been created to traverse large graphs, including PowerGraph, GraphG, GraphX, and Xstream, all within this community. Running breadth-first search, even, a linear complexity algorithm on the 1.8 billion edge social network graph Friendster takes 15 seconds on Xstream. And as graph mining will be a larger than linear time complexity, that's gonna get expensive. So let's talk about graph mining specifically now. Unlike graph traversals, graph mining searches for structural patterns within graph data sets. Two of the most common expressions of this problem are motif counting, which finds all patterns of a particular size, and frequent subgraph mining, which takes it a step further and separates otherwise identical patterns according to labels on their vertices or edges. Graph mining problems find uses in activity networks for anomaly and fraud detection, and in protein interaction networks for determining their purposes within bioinformatics, as well as acting as a fingerprinting tool for comparison between huge graph data sets. Even mining for triangles, one of the simplest possible patterns, is more expensive than BFS, and that's popular in graph computation systems. But even patterns as trivial as this are useful. Notice that in Facebook, triangles are made up of you, your, mutual, your friends, and your mutual friends. And that's the sort of query that may be running with extremely high frequency on a huge data set, where performance optimization can have real tangible benefits, including cost savings. Despite its simplicity, the ubiquity of triangle counting has led it to be a very well-studied problem in the literature. There are dozens of papers just optimizing its performance and hundreds using it as a primitive, as well as showing up as an optimization challenge. And the triangle counting problem is interesting, but the problem gets much harder as soon as we make the, comp the pattern just a tiny bit more complex. In this example, we've added just an edge and a vertex to this pattern but that already serves to increase the complexity a lot. And there have been a few papers explicitly developing complex algorithms for this and other patterns on four vertices. But if we don't want to rely on the algorithms community to write hundreds more papers optimizing each pattern for us, we need a system that can handle this problem in general. Fortunately, there has been some work in the systems community to develop general systems for the graph mining problem. Arabesque and Rstream use a clever database-like idea to build up subgraph embeddings and test if they can eventually form instances of a target pattern. Each step grows the embeddings by an edge according to a table join on the vertices, and this model can always find instances of the target pattern. Arabesque implemented this very general approach in distributed memory, and then Rstream further improved it by streaming data from the disk on a single machine. Let's take a look at the performance of these systems compared to a single threaded implementation as a benchmark. Consider this simple example where we have two vertices which are connected and each of which has some neighbors. Those neighbors lists are indeed sets and the intersection of those sets contains the vertices which form a triangle incident on the red edge. This leads to the simple set intersection algorithm shown on the right that we employ for the single threaded implementation. What we find is that in the, unfortunately, 
this case shows that the single-threaded implementation can indeed outperform our stream on triangle counting. And Arabesque takes too long to even be practical to show here. It's launching a distributed environment, after all. In an ideal graph mining system, we'd like to support the level of generality that these systems have without, while avoiding paying the costs that they incur. A key reason the costs are so high is that the intermediate data tables these systems generate and store can become huge. And such a large working set is hard to get good performance on, no matter what you do. Now, if you're ready to see something cool, I'd like to introduce you to AutoMine, a compiler for graph mining that harmonizes the generality of a high-level abstraction with the performance of low-level tuning, entirely automatically. The only inputs it needs are the structural patterns you're actually looking for. And it works through the whole process, from algorithm design to implementation of code that work, can work directly on your data set and give you the result. There are interesting challenges in producing this, both on the algorithm side and the system side. And we'll take a look at the algorithms first. We can learn from the simple triangle counting algorithm that running set intersections on vertices and their neighbor sets can easily find simple patterns. And we can use sets to reason about this idea further. What we're going to do is let the pattern itself guide us to an algorithm that you will use to find it. In the triangle counting algorithm, we took a very simple path through the pattern using only set intersection. But patterns in general can be missing some edges, so we need to respect that property as well. And it turns out that set difference gives us the perfect tool to encode those missing edges. And we embed the pattern in the sequence of set operations such that we're able to find the pattern using only very simple ops. Each step adds a vertex to the embedding now, and the sequence of steps that we perform will embed the structure of the pattern exactly in the code. This naturally leads us to look at a scheduling space where we can traverse the vertices of a pattern in different orders. It's all the same operations, but used at different times. And because of that, we can get different performance. The paper describes the selection process in detail, but the key idea to distinguish between them is that in a sparse graph, the size of the average for an intersection set is much smaller than the size of a difference. That behavior is the result of the probability that a vertex is a neighbor of both vertices, given that it's a neighbor of one. And since we loop over the generated sets, we can reason about the expected number of iterations according to this average degree analysis. Once we've found our algorithm, it's time to move on to the system side and implement it. This will also be handled entirely automatically. Here's some example schedules using intersection and difference for the two patterns that you'll see in the top right. And they go through a sequence of transformations to become efficient code. AutoMine applies a traditional compiler's technique to move computations out of dependent contexts so that their results can be reused instead of recomputed. Every schedule starts off the same and then diverges later. So all the work done into the converged parts is combined to further improve data reuse. The next step maps the set operations onto a nested loop structure that respects the dependencies and convergence goals. And finally, we emit real code to pass to the host compiler. This code faithfully implements and maintains all the benefits of the set intersection and difference optimizations that we looked at earlier. We have built-in support for parallelization and data reuse. And with C++'s end of scope for cleanup behavior, easy memory management. Note that the pattern structure is embedded in the nested loop structure, with V0, V1, and V2 forming the recursive, symbolic basis for all the patterns we encounter. Because we preserve the locality in this way, supporting out-of-core processing is actually very simple and the trivial technique of using memory mapped I.O. can already do a great job. The key reason this can improve performance is we break the synchronization of the tables idea, which initially have to synchronize globally between every table being produced. We're also able to use memory pooling to ensure that our memory management is simple and doesn't blow up in required usage. And by using a linear scan algorithm for performing the set intersection and difference on sorted lists of integers, 
we're able to produce an output sorted list and make the process of propagating the sets further through the structure as easy as possible. Now, with the capability to automatically generate and implement efficient algorithms, we can make the user's life super easy by exposing some helpful APIs. We use our basic APIs as building blocks to create high-level ones that a user can call to perform clique counting, motif counting, or frequent subgraph mining. The clique counting API, for instance, defines the desired clique pattern, then generates a counting program for it. And any new graph mining task could be implemented on top of the basic APIs and exposed at the application level. And at this point, our system's complete. So we're gonna take a look at its performance now. We evaluate AutoMine on a system with 20 cores, 40 hyperthreads, and 64 gigabytes of memory. We use graphs from various areas with sizes ranging from thousands to billions of edges, the largest coming from social networks and web crawls. And we can show considerable performance improvement over Arabesque and RStream here, even on three vertex patterns. In our best case, we take about one-tenth of a second to perform a task that, that RStream takes almost half an hour to complete, and a, a five-order of magnitude performance improvement. On larger graphs, RStream either times out at two days or runs out of memory or disk in six of these 10 tests, but we can handle even the largest case, motif counting on a 780 million edge graph in about seven and a half hours. When running frequent subgraph mining, we see some places where our stream can't run with low support values. That's the minimum number of patterns that need to be present before needing to provide a count. But we also observe cases where its database-like approach ends up doing a really great job at filtering. The key reason we see sub substantial speedups over our stream or see it fail to complete is the size of intermediate data. On patents, a 150 megabyte graph file we observe our stream writing half a, half a terabyte of data to disk in the process of performing size four motif counting. AutoMine, on the other hand, needs just the 150 megabytes for the graph file, plus an additional megabyte of intermediate data. The loop structure we saw earlier is the key reason we can do this, because we only main the, maintain the intermediate data for exactly as long as it's useful, and then discard it immediately. So it's hard to run any sort of large pattern analysis on prior systems, and that might contribute to why triangle counting is so ubiquitous, because it's the cheapest possible expression of this problem. But we have interest in looking at larger patterns, so we go ahead and show cliques of six to eight vertices, running on graphs of three million and 117 million edges for these results, always finishing in under an hour. With results like these, we decided to take a look towards ASAP, a state-of-the-art approximate graph mining system that uses a 5% error target, and see how AutoMine fares on triangle counting. And as it turns out, even the approximate results take longer than what AutoMine can achieve, between 2.8 and 68 times faster for these cases. On larger patterns, the work reduction of approximation becomes more important, and ASAP can stretch its legs and show great performance. But for these smaller tests, we can indeed show some performance advantage. So what have we learned? We know that manually designed algorithms can substantially outperform graph mining systems that prioritize generality. But manually designing algorithms is so time consuming that we can't expect the algorithms community to do all that work for us. AutoMine tackles this by harmonizing the high level abstraction of general mining systems with the high performance of manual designs by automating the algorithm design process. It's at this point that I'll leave you with a challenge in the form of a question. Can we extend this idea to other domains? Abstracting away the algorithm design process can help users and programmers alike, and we hope to see the idea pushed in as many directions as possible. And with that, I'm ready to take questions. Thank you. Nice work, uh, really cool. Um, can you say something about, uh, can we use this system, or at least the idea uh, that you've proposed in the algorithms for streaming graphs? For streaming graphs, okay, yes. 
We have actually current work going on to try and work on that exact problem. And the key thing that you have to worry about is that the diameter of natural graphs tends to be extremely small. And so you may be updating a large number of patterns by making a small number of changes to the vertices and edges. Mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting problem to look at. And there are some benefits you might be able to gain by doing some computations, for instance, on a client and server side if you're sending updates. All right, thank you. So one of the things that, that occurred to me um, in this talk is it seems like you've pushed the boundary of what you can fit on a single machine considerably, but, but do you feel that we're eventually going to still have graphs that are big enough they have to be sharded across multiple systems and sort of any thoughts about how you might go in that direction? Great question. So yes, we already have graphs that are too large to practically fit on a single system. And that may be because of their data size or maybe because of the cost that you incur by doing counting on them. So for this work, we show some performance results on graphs that don't fit inside main memory. This graph, for instance, has about 100 gigabytes of data that we're processing on a machine with 64 gigabytes of memory. And the locality optimizations that I mentioned using memory mapped I.O. make it really easy to use paging and have a really good result where we can perform size four clique counting on this graph of 25.7 billion edges in 12.6 hours. Okay, all right, let's thank our speaker.